All right. Now, deriving a polynomial function given coordinates of several points. In this case, really what that means is that we have x-intercepts and y-intercepts. So when we have three x-intercepts, this would mean, for the most time, that this is a cubic polynomial. Okay, we have three distinct roots. We have y-intercept, which really means when x is equal to 0, y is equal to that given value. And in order to complete the task, we have to first identify the leading coefficient that is in front of the highest degree term. To do that, we will take advantage of the x-intercept, the y-intercept. So when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 15. So the general equation of that polynomial function that we're looking for can be written in factored form. So this is an expanded form, but we want to do it in factored form, which is way more convenient for us. Okay. So first, find the leading coefficient a. So given root negative 1, you go x minus negative 1. So this is the first factor. The second factor, x minus 3. And the last one, x minus 5. Now, since x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 15, which was given, we will replace y with 15, x with 0. So this is why the left side is 15 and the right hand side is a times 1 times negative 3 times negative 5, which will give you 15 in the end. Therefore, a has to be 1. So the leading coefficient a is 1. To complete our task and ex give the expression an expanded form, all you do now is start with y, insert the value of a, which is 1. So we don't have to really show 1 in front of bracket. It's not a mistake, but it's redundant to say times 1. But if you really, really want to see it, go for it. So x plus 1, I'm just copying the rest, x minus 3, and x minus 5. And when you expand it, you will have, in the end, x to the power of 3 minus 7x squared plus 7x plus 15. Key point here. Remember the y-intercept is 15. You must get that value in your answer. If you don't get that, something must have went wrong with the solution. Go check it again. Leading coefficient a is 1, therefore there is no reason for added value in front of x cubed other than 1. Okay, now, another quick example. Find the equation of the polynomial function given the following. x-intercept, so x is equal to negative 1, this time order 2. Which means it is repeated twice. And then we have x is equal to 3 and x is equal to 5. When we don't mention that this is order 2 or any other order, then the assumption is this is order 1. So this is just one occurrence for 3, for 5, but two occurrences for negative 1. So in total, I have one, two, three, four, zero values, which would imply that I'm looking for quartic function. So therefore, we will be looking for a x to the power of four. Plus x cubed, cx squared, plus dx plus e. Now, there is one more piece of information that the y-intercept 
was given is when y is equal to 30. Without that, it would be rather difficult to, def to pinpoint exact equation. Okay, so we have enough information. Now, again, the strategy here is to come up with factored form of that equation that we're looking for. So y is equal a, this leading coefficient that must be always, always there. So order two for x minus one. So I go x minus negative one, which will be x plus one squared. x minus three times x minus five. Okay, this is amazing. Now, usually when y-intercept is given, we need to incorporate that in our solution. So this would mean that x is 0, and then y is equal to 30. So as an example above, we will do the same thing. So the left side is 30, and you're finding coefficient a. When you go 0 plus 1, 0 minus 3, and 0 minus 5. So. When you expand that, you're going to get 15 times 1, which is 15, left side 30. So A must be 2. Okay, so that's the leading coefficient. A is 2. Putting it together and resolving. So maybe I'm going to block off this section and let us start with y is equal 2. Remember, a is 2. We must show that. In factored form, x plus 1 squared times the remaining binomial. So, when you do that, you have a lot of work to complete here. So, quickly, I'm going to give you some hints. When I have that binomial squared, take advantage of the formula, or quickly do, do this on site, and in the end you're going to have x squared plus 2x plus 1. This trinomial now will be multiplied by this product of two binomials. So you can also do x minus 3 times x minus 5. Whoops on side and that's going to give you x squared minus 8x plus 15. Okay, so when you expand it, now you're going to multiply two binomials. So just a key point here, constant value 1, 15. So 1 times 15 will give me 15 with that existing value of 2 in the front, you must get 30, which means things are looking good. Okay, so when you expand it, I'm not going to do this here, not enough time, too long video. So in the end, you will get, when you do the exercise on your own, you should get 2x to the power of 4 minus 12x cubed. plus 44x plus 30. See, 30, it's the confirmation here. Coefficient, of the leading term is two, so there you go. And the remaining part is just uh, whatever that happens to be. Now, there is no second degree term here, which is fine. You don't have to have them all, all the time. As long as I have the highest degree term, then I know that my equation represents a quartic polynomial function. So thank you for watching this video, and next video we'll do division of polynomials. See you next time.